Hey, how y'all doing? This is Mongo Slade. And today we're going to talk about number eight, Lana being put through the table for the eighth time. But first, hit the like button. Also hit subscribe, unless you're already subscribed. In which case, thank you very much for being subscribed. Okay, so there was, let's talk about the women's Survivor Series match, which is, you know, it's just people fighting. First, Shayna Baszler had squashed Lana, essentially, in a one-on-one match where Lana got very little to no offense, um, which is, which makes sense. You know, I was listening to, I believe it was Disco, Disco Inferno and Conan. They were talking about WWE is just burying Lana. You know, they're just, they're just burying Lana. I don't, they don't see a benefit to it or anything like that. And it's like, they're not punishing Lana. They're pushing Lana. You know, and it, I know it's hard for some people to to, to get because it's it, you know because opinion you know it because of the way it looks, but Lana is being positioned as a sympathetic character. This is a redemption arc because Lana, I, I, I've said it a hundred times already, Lana is not a wrestler, so she's in a position where she can't be a wrestler. She's being a, in a situation where she has she's trying to be determined. Uh, the best way I can explain it, and I think it's just popped into my head as I was talking, but she's basically the female Mikey Ripwreck, you know? And then a lot of people might not realize this, but Mikey Ripwreck, uh, they put, he was basically a kid who signed up for ECW and he basically would work matches and he would get no offense in. He had, he would just go in there and take, take a, take a beating. And th- through his beating, through his ability to sell, and his ability to get sympathy, he be- ended up becoming a really sort of top line wrestler. He became a, a world champion in ECW, that, which I think is a blight on the ECW title because Mikey Whipwreck. I mean, come on, let's be serious. But he was he got he became incredibly sympathetic. He gained so much character through just getting beaten up, you know, because people felt bad for him. Oscar is in the same situation where she's dealing with killers. You know, she's wrestling Oscar and Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. She's not going out there getting beat by Peyton Royce or, you know, somebody like that. She's going out there and she's wrestling the, the best of the best in this division and getting killed. But she keeps showing up. And that's really is going to make people be like that. She's tough. You know, that's that's what they're trying to show is that. Maybe she's feckless as far as offense is concerned, but you're never going to kill Lana. You're never really going to get rid of her. But so, you know, after um, Shayna Baszler choked Lana out, uh, <laughs> Nia Jax obviously was going to put her through the table. But uh, Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke stopped it. Now they kind of forced Nia Jax to put her down, and then Lana was able to scamper away. Later, uh, they talked about this. Lana thanked them. And they were still mad at Lana for costing them a tag team title match. And they say, we, we just basically just, we helped you to stick it to Nia Jax. You know, that's really all it was. <laughs> we just wanted to stick it to Nia Jax. We weren't really trying to help you. And in any event, it, it was still a, well, thanks anyway. <laughs> you know, like, like, thanks anyway. You know, you still could have let me get put through the table, but you didn't. So, but that's just kind of how, you know, that, it's been, a, that's been a, a nice little thing there where they didn't forget that Lana screwed them over, but they also didn't, um, they did the, the right thing as baby faces is they, pro- they protected the woman who was getting bullied, but they still held, you know, they still have a bit of a grudge and they're just saying, Hey, and she was like, Oh, I was just trying to help you guys win. And it was like, man, we don't need any help. <laughs> you know, just mind your business. But you know, is Lana trying to do what she can to to stick it to Nia Jax. And that's pretty much what's going on here is Nia Jax's ego is out of control. So later on, Nia Jax wrestles Asuka because the reason for this match is real bizarre because, you know, uh, she, you know Nia wants to prove that she's the, the number one woman in the division, even though this is not a title match, which is strange. Like, shouldn't this be a title match in order to prove that you're the, if you want to be the top dog, you should be the champion. But this wasn't a title match. Um, and Oscar and Nia Jax had their match. Dana, Dana Brooke and Lana and Mandy Rose were at ringside. So was Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler also has uh, kind of been saying, I'm the 
I'm the bully of the pack. I'm I'm the real leader of this division. But, you know, Nia Jax is kind of like, look, you know, trying to prove to Shayna Baszler her dominance without actually having to fight Shayna Baszler. So uh, they had the match, uh, Asuka and Nia Jax. It's pretty much, it was a decent match. They've had, I think they actually like working with each other because I saw them tweeting at each other before about how much they love working together. You know, Asuka is pretty much the only woman Nia Jax could throw around without getting a bunch of complaints. Because Oscar wrestled men, so she don't give a shit. And Nia Jax is as strong as a man, so she don't she doesn't give a shit either. But um, she gets put in uh, Nia Jax gets put in some version of the Oscar lock because her body is so big it wasn't like it was killing her. And Shannon Baszler came in, kicked uh, Oscar, and got Nia Jax disqualified. Then Nia and Shannon Jax, not, not Shannon Jax. You might as well call them Shayna Jacks. Nia and Shayna Baszler beat up Mandy Rose, Oscar, and Dana Brooke, and they put Lana through the table for the eighth time. And once again, uh, Nia Jax says that Lana does not belong on the team, and that she's gonna, she, you're not gonna drag us down. She's tired of Lana. <laughs> she wants Lana to go away, but Lana will not go away. And you know what? I don't know if it's working. A lot of people are kind of frustrated by the whole Lana going through the table thing. Um, I'm not because I, like I said, I understand it. It's a Mikey Rick Rex story. It's a, you're going to beat this person to paste. And what's going to happen is everyone's going to become to respect them, you know? And that's what this story is on is about. It's not about, well, if she's going to like, would you really believe it? If Lana was turned into fucking Bill Goldberg all of a sudden, and she was just beating everybody. It wouldn't even be realistic. It wouldn't be realistic because everybody knows that Lana is not a work is not a workhorse. She's a dancer, but you can always push people in a different way. They're not pushing Lana as being a physical threat. They're pushing her as being determined and being uh, you know, pretty much unbreakable. Like no matter how many times you bully her and beat her up, she's going to keep coming back because this is what she wants to do. And it's sort of a manifestation of how people have treated her. Over the last several years when, you know, Lana, this isn't the first time Lana really wanted to wrestle. Lana wanted to wrestle years ago. Uh, what was this? Uh, 2015, maybe 2016, 2017. Well, Lana wanted to wrestle and she was just so bad that everybody was like, get out of the ring. <laughs> so they took her out of the ring. I guess she went back to training and then she's back again. You know, so, you know, <laughs> I'm not saying that she's any better. I'm just saying is it makes sense from a storyline perspective that. You know, you have this person that you that you know that she's good at getting attention. So she's also good at getting sympathy. You know, like Lana again, Lana's the draw. Lana is the person everybody watches when it comes to this division. If you were to stack up, uh, look at interest online, social media, and all that type of stuff, Lana is far more interesting than everybody else in this match, including Oscar, which is uh, sad. But uh. And so they, they they just choosing to do something different with her. Like you can't turn her into a world beater. That's just not gonna. That's not how it works. How it works. You know she's gonna. She's been a heel for years. She's never wrestled as a babyface until now. When she used to wrestle, she used to wrestle as a heel, and she would always get beaten like ten seconds or something like that. So these are the longest segments she's been a part of that didn't revolve around her making out with somebody. So I'm all for it. I, I think that it's gonna be worth the investment. Because it's going to be an interesting thing when Nia Jax eventually has to accept Alana as being a, a good member of the team. It is probably going to be as Lana is going to be the sole survivor for Raw. And I've, I've seen people say that too. You know, that Lana is going to end up being the sole survivor in the match because what else is all this stuff for? And that's a good point. <laughs> that's, a, that's a real good point. There you go, bro. So, uh, the Lana story is, I find it to be very interesting, you know, because it's a, it is that Mikey Whitbreck story, but, um, let me know what you guys think, um, in the comment section below, uh, like this video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll talk to you guys later.